Thanks so much for your time, Ridwan. We do appreciate it. I think if we could just start off with the current um, positioning of South Africa in terms of our COVID-19 infection rates, uh, it does look quite promising compared to where we were a few weeks ago. Good afternoon, Heidi. Um, indeed, nationally, all of the, the measures and the metrics continue on their sustained decline, which is indeed quite promising. Um, if we look further at those um, uh, case incidence rate and the test positivity rate, those leading indicators have declined sufficiently below the threshold to indicate that as a country, we have formally now exited the third wave, which comes as quite a relief after a very long and de devastating third wave. Um, just looking closer at those numbers, on average over the past week, uh, we've averaged just over 2,230 uh, cases per day across the country. That figure has decreased by 40% week on week, um, and it's down to just under four new cases per 100,000 uh, people uh, in the country, um, and down to 11% of what we saw at the peak of this third wave. Um, so certainly much lower than where we were at a few weeks ago. And confirming that decline, the test positivity rate nationally um, has, is also continuing its decline down to 6.8 percent on average. Um, so those indicators confirming that formally South Africa has exited the third wave. If only it would stay on such a decline, Ridwan. Uh, speak to us about um, some of the provinces that are already out the third wave and perhaps uh, the provinces that are still of concern in terms of their COVID-19 infection rates. Yeah, so we do know that the, the timing of the third wave and the spread um, and the rate of transmission across the provinces does vary. Uh, promisingly, all of the provinces are showing a uh, decline across all of the indicators as well. Um, some provinces further ahead than others. So if you look at those uh, formal thresholds, uh, five provinces have formally exited the third wave as well. This includes Gauteng, Limpopo, Mpumalanga, Northwest and recently KwaZulu-Natal as well. Um, the Western Cape and the Eastern Cape um, are on track uh, to formally uh, go below those thresholds during the course of this week. Um, the provinces of the Northern Cape and the Free State remain a slight concern, though they are decreasing. Um, over the course of this wave, they have been um, quite erratic in their trajectories um, and uh, have plateaued at a high case incidence and high test positivity. Hopefully, the decline that we see now will remain sustained in those two provinces. What remains quite worrying is our hospitalization and death numbers. Even though it's declined now that the country is officially out of its third wave, it's still very worrying, isn't it? It is worrying, uh, but we do know that these lagging indicators of hospitalizations and deaths lag the cases and the test positivity rates by between one to five weeks. So seeing that the, the decline in the case incidence and test positivity, we hope that, that we'll see a continued decline now in the hospitalizations and deaths reported across the country. They both have started to show a decline over the last few weeks. Um, last week, we saw um, just over 3,500 new hospital admissions across the country. That figure declined by 32% week on week, um, promisingly all provinces showing a decline in new hospital admissions. And also, if you look at the number of deaths reported, while still high at uh, 126 deaths on average per day across the country over the past week, it has declined as well by 35% week on week. Uh, Ridwan, just quickly speak to me lastly about um, the decision by the UK government to keep South Africa on that red list. Many people are saying, especially scientists and um, those in health, saying it makes no sense given that our numbers are on the decline and it's no longer the beta variant that's dominating our infection rate, but rather the delta variant that's also in the UK. Indeed, Heidi, the, the decision, that specific decision um, does, uh, is a bit confusing and um, certainly isn't quite consistent in terms of the scientific evidence and the data that we are seeing. Um, so while the use of red lists um, are certainly fair enough uh, by countries to try and limit the importation um, of cases uh, globally. I think practically um, it, it is very difficult to try and, uh, and limit uh, the, that importation when you know that COVID-19 um, has been spreading across all of the countries um, and certainly um, the, the 
the implementation as well as the use of red lists has not been scientific and it's not been transparent either. Um, we know when we compare different countries, we do need to take into account that the testing rates vary, the type of reporting varies between countries. Um, furthermore, the detection of variants across countries is dependent on um, us having the sequencing and the surveillance capability to do so. And as a country, we shouldn't be punished uh, for the good work that we are doing. Um, in terms of the specific uh, variant currently dominant in the country, it is the Delta variant, uh, which is accounting for more than 95% of cases sequenced in the country. So it has displaced the Beta variant. Um, so I think uh, th there certainly is inconsistency in the application of the Red List and certainly a lack of transparency thereof. So hopefully we'll get um, some answers from the UK government and hopefully our government can put some pressure on the UK government. Thanks so much for all that you do and all those graphs that you put together. That's Ridwan Suleiman from the CSIR.